smart, uh, Clayton Morris, probably you, as far as like other people out there, there ain't really anybody else out there that's like singing your praises. If you have somebody that you think would be smart to talk to that would help you, I'd be interested in calling them. You gave me two phone numbers before. I called them both multiple times, and they didn't get back to me. So as of right now, it don't look like there's a lot of people out there singing your praises. But, you know. Well, those people have nothing to do with me. These were just people that were also harmed by birth. Your side of the story is you didn't harm anyone. You were also a victim. There's a goddamn judgment. There's a fucking lawsuit. And a goddamn judgment in the courts is public. It's been all over the Indian press. The, pub, the, the, the lawyer for... The lawyer for the, the, the plaintiffs that went after birth won. They're all over. You can reach out to him. He'd be more than happy to talk to you. But they, you won't because you want to keep it focused on the anti like, I did. I didn't say like, that. I didn't say that one way or the other. I didn't say that one way or the other. You're putting words in my mouth. Again, I'm not, I'm not here to argue with you, man. Like, you're putting words in my mouth at this point. Like, there's a lot of lawsuits out there. There's like 25 of them. You know, when 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 you do it, it, it just gets spun like you're spinning this. I mean, it per, you know, purposely ignoring and won't include like all these other people that were hurt by by Ocean Point, Burr Whale, and I'm specifically focusing on me. I mean, it, it's definitely more than just an average guy that's selling homes you know he, he, he quit he seemed like he had quite a passion for for re rental real estate so enough to quit a fox job and that's when i decided i needed to talk to mr morris himself so what did i do i left a comment on his youtube channel and said hey mr morris hit me up via text on my personal cell so we can chat about what is going on here and on march 30th that is exactly what we did Clayton Morris and I had a phone conversation and I took notes, no recordings or anything, just notes on the conversation that we had. And in that conversation, Mr. Morris was very open about what had happened. And the very first thing that got me thinking, aha, I have a little bit of a better picture of what's going on here, was when Mr. Morris said, quote, he had a relationship he believed in, end quote, with a company that, quote, managed my personal properties as well, end quote. Regarding my conversation with Mr. Morris, very, very good conversation. We ended that call by realizing that 2019 will probably end up being the toughest year of Mr. Morris's life. But there was one quote that he left me with that I thought was especially powerful. Here it is. At the end of the call, he mentioned that when he gets on stage in front of 2,000 people, there are, quote, 2,000 opinions of me in the room. Not one of them is true. I can focus on the 1,000 people that love me or on that one troll, end quote. And ultimately, he suggested if we stay true to ourselves, we have nothing to worry about. Thanks for watching. Now, Kevin, you did uh, an interview with Clayton earlier this year. And, uh, you know, in, you go around, you make all these videos, uh, more or less you're exposing real estate related I don't know if I want to use the term scams, but like anytime you see something in the real estate industry that doesn't sit well with you, you've made a lot of these exposure videos and they're very popular on YouTube. And, uh, you know, you go pretty hard at folks, right? Like, you know, it's pretty well documented out there that you've had a feud with Grant Cardone for what feels like a couple years now. Uh, your video about Morris, though, I had felt that uh, you went a little light on him. Now, granted, your your video with him and your interview with him, that all happened before it came out that he fled the United States to Portugal. Do you still have that same feeling about him now that you did then? Or what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, you know, my video about Clayton Morris was one of those things where I, I decided – Initially, at least, I thought, it's over. He did his damage. It was, you know, terrible what happened, and it's on. Let's now make a video about the learning lessons about how people could prevent getting scammed with turnkey real estate companies where these type of scams are significantly more prominent, especially since people are dealing with out-of-state investors and people in California are throwing money into places like Indianapolis, and then they're clueless that the properties that they're investing in are burned down or abandoned. And so I geared my video more 
more towards the concept of really the turnkey industry, a little bit more than Clayton Morris. But you're right, if I had made a, the video specifically about Clayton Morris and, uh, you know, the alleged crimes that he had committed and the money that he lost, I could have been a lot more aggressive. There's plenty of material. Now, <clears throat> I've talked to Clayton on the phone multiple times. Mm -hmm. And you, you see this, this as a, a, like a more or less like a, a theme with a lot of the folks that uh, have claimed they've lost money investing with this platform. And I got that impression when I talked to him too. When you talk to Clayton, the guy is like the most personable motherfucker I've ever talked to in my life. The guy is an amazing salesman and he just makes you feel so comfortable. Like, when I talk to him, I'm, I'm talking to him. I'm telling him I'm making this video, and, you know, there's going to be parts of the video that probably, uh, you know, are going to come out very negative. And the guy's talking to me about, man, if you and I had met under different circumstances, we'd be getting a beer going to a Phillies game. And I'm like, man, I would love to get a beer with this guy. This is, like, the nicest guy ever. Did any of that, like, play a role in your thoughts on him after your original interview with him? Wow, you're making me realize something here that I may not have even thought of, but you're, you're right. It's totally possible, looking back now, that even myself, who makes exposed videos, could have been manipulated to decide, okay, well, rather than just going brutally hard on Clayton, let's just go hit the concept of turnkey real estate and you know how people can sort of prevent this possibly in the future. It's absolutely possible that his personality and how you know, we were able to connect on a level of talking about our children and even as simple, uh, you know, simple things like ring doorbells it, were things we were talking about. It's totally possible that that at least subconsciously manipulated me to gear my video towards the industry and not him. Yeah, I, I feel the same way because, <clears throat> you know, throughout the production of, of our documentary, our film here, uh, you know, after various phone calls with Clayton, I had to question some of the things other folks were saying. And I was like, wait, maybe we really need to to look at Waylon deeper. Because, um, you know, Clayton has maintained throughout this entire experience uh, his, his defense. And he has maintained that he is every bit as much of a victim as those who are claiming to be victims. And that all of the blame should be pushed towards Burt Waylon. Now, when you did your video back then, right? You know, could have been a little bit of back then. Clayton hadn't left the country. A lot of the information we have today as you and I talk hasn't been out there. And it could have been a little bit of, you know, uh, a seduction, so to speak, after talking with Clayton. Because I'm a dude, everyone who's talked about having conversations with the guy, myself included, you feel that way after you talk to him. He's an amazing communicator. With what you have at your disposal now, all, all the knowledge you have right now available to you today, do you still agree that Clayton really wasn't involved in anything shysty uh, and most of the blame should be placed on Bert? Or what are your thoughts on that? To me, when you run a business, the buck stops with the business owner signing the contracts with the customers. And unfortunately, that's Clayton. If I'm going to run a company and my job is to subcontract essentially to property managers or uh, co you know, actual general contractors, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. If there's a problem down the line, it's my problem because I represent to my customers that I'm going to do everything for them. And based on all of the research I've done, Unfortunately, that's what Clayton represented to his clients. His clients did not have the impression that they were working with other contractors and that he was essentially a referral service, sort of an intermediary. That's not the impression they had, so that's not the service they should have gotten. Now, to, to kind of piggyback off on that point, right? Mm -hmm. Because it, it, feels, it feels a little bit like, uh, you know, there was one defense and we've kind of shifted now that it's more convenient, Right. Because there's documentation out there, uh, there there's video evidence uh, where, yeah, the fact that he was acting simply as an intermediary wasn't necessarily pushed to the forefront, right? More or less, uh, he was acting as a real estate broker or a real estate agent collecting a commission. As a matter of fact, you know, through my conversations with him, uh, he broke down the commission structure to me that he was paid from Ocean Point. Because Clayton has never disputed that any of those properties uh, were owned by Ocean Point. Clayton, at this point, has claimed all those properties were owned by Ocean Point. 
and he was simply acting as a, a, a middleman, right? A, a broker, essentially, right? So the commission structure, he told me he sold roughly 500 of those down in Indy, and he made, it was a varying scale. Eventually, when he got really going, uh, he maxed out at 6,500. So the math, the rough napkin math that Clayton and I did was he made roughly two to three million in commissions because of this. I know the New York Times said he made, uh, I don't know, around five or six million, right? I'm a real estate broker. You're a real estate broker. I'm, a, I'm an Ohio real estate broker. You're a California real estate broker. Uh, Clayton has never held a real estate license in any of the 50 states. His wife held a license in New Jersey, uh, but none of these properties were in New Jersey. Do you think Clayton is in for a world of hurt when it comes to the Indiana Division of Real Estate also coming on top of him above everything else he's dealing with? That could just add insult to injury for him, honestly. I mean, it's clear to me that this is exactly the position that a real estate agent, a real estate broker fulfills, that is taking you know, folks' money and, and sort of finding them deals and helping them transact that process and get the, I mean, this is textbook real estate sales. You know, I've got my own medium that, would, that is gonna get the our side of the story out there in a big way, the correct way. I'm not interested in, in the same way that I would not hang out on bigger pockets owned by another company with people who threaten violence against their own terms of service. I, I have my own media. I don't work at bigger and pockets. I I'm literally have no idea what you're saying. My experience was actually horrible. Uh <laughs>